Simax, Hardings, Timberwolves, everybody deals with something. In our Sunday morning class, we were talking about Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. But Jesus says, take no thought on tomorrow. Tomorrow is sufficient. The evil of tomorrow is sufficient for itself. You see, worry about today, amen? Don't worry about today, but be concerned about today. Uh, he said, he gives over all things, and Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these other things, like, I got all that. Uh, worry, worry about tomorrow, amen? Is it okay to plan for tomorrow? Yes. Plan next week, next month? Yes. yes, it's okay to plan for, but don't worry about it. Because you can't change anything by worrying about it, amen? And we talked about it this morning, and we realized that not only will the well, excess worry take you to the hospital, it will take you past the hospital. It will take you right to the cemetery. Whatever you're dealing with, first and foremost, turn over to God. Go to Him for prayer. Give you a game plan. And it's up to you to work the plan, amen. But you got to have trust in Him. Amen. No matter which way it comes out, at the end of the day, it's just real, whatever it may be, amen. amen. So, with that thought in mind, the only constant that we have in our lives is the steadfastness of the Lord. And what these lessons have been intended to do is to show up or reinforce your confidence and your trust that you should possess as a child of God. These things should be in us, that we have confidence, we have trust as a child of God, that he's going to be the one we can always trust in. Psalm 118, verse 1, excuse me, Psalm 118, verse number 8 says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Mm -hmm. Psalm 118, verse 9 says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. This morning, 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 1 says, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 1 says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in the high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon unto sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand Burnt offerings that Solomon offered upon that offering. He's trying to somebody had some on his mind. Amen. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. Well, I can see some of us sitting down like, let me get back with that recording. Amen. We have to make a list. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. Solomon was a little child. But Solomon was just taking in perspective his position in relationship to God. He says, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant and understanding the heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this that so great a people? And the speech 
please the Lord. That Solomon had asked this thing. And God said, you know, because thou has asked this thing, has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but it asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Talk three answers on the board, amen. <laughs> He's just simply saying this is what a lot of people, amen. Talk three answers. This is probably what they would say. Mm -hmm. Long life, mm -hmm. riches, mm -hmm. and take care of my enemy for me. But Solomon asked those things. Mm -mm. He asked for understanding to discern judgment. Verse 12 says, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Say, way before and will be out. Right. right. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor. Hmm. So that there should not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Conditional. And if thou wilt walk in my path, keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Man, what a deal. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Now comes a test. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together, there was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house, just us two and our two babies. Mm -hmm. And this woman's child died in the night because she lay over it, or overlaid it. Such a sad situation. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. What a sad situation. And when I rose in the morning to get my child up, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And another woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, the dead is thy son. And this said, no, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So they got this banter going on back and forth before the king. No, this is my son. No, that's your son. You like, and you should, no, no. Then said the king, the one said, this is my son, the living, and thy son is dead. And the other said, the neighbor, thy son is dead, and my son is the living. So he just repeated what they had said. And the king said, bring me a sword. Take care of this quick, fast, and in a hurry. Bring your sword. They brought a sword for the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Mm. Then spake the woman whose living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, Oh my Lord, give her the living child. And in no way slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Mm -hmm. This woman had thrown over the edge because of her grief. Mm -hmm. Then the king answered and said, give her the little child and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Mm -hmm. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king when they saw that the wisdom of God was in him mm -hmm. to do judgment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the 
talk about the importance of trusting in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. We understand that we're recipients of untold blessings when we trust in the Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Our afflictions, though many in some cases, are but for a moment when we trust in the Lord. Yeah. When we trust in the Lord, we don't rely on things and people. Amen. We rely on the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust is actually based on faith. And we talk about Abraham. And we talk about Noah. And we talk about Daniel. We talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We talk about Moses. We talk about Joshua. We talk about David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. We talk about all these individuals and how they trusted in the Lord to bring them through one way or another. Mm -hmm. And this morning, for just a few minutes, before I close this morning, I want to talk to us this morning on the subject. I will trust the Lord to fill me with wisdom. This is how you did on this this morning in our lesson. And it took everything I could to just not say anything. I just want to do this. Go oh, see how far you go into it. She was trying to preach my lesson this morning in Sunday school. <laughs> but we did mention this in our Sunday school lesson this morning. I will trust the Lord to fill me with wisdom. Solomon having the occasion, the opportunity to ask, notice God didn't put any limitation on what he would ask. He could ask. At the same time, he didn't uh, go. Just so you can get away from anything, amen. Right. Some of us would have shot for the moon, amen. Mm -hmm. But Solomon, he asked God for understanding and judgment. Yeah. He, he wanted God to be able to lead God's people in the right or a righteous way. So, so what is this thing that Solomon asked for of the Lord that so pleased him? But what could have moved our God to be so pleased in what Solomon had asked? And Solomon did not ask for the top three. He didn't ask for uh, long life. He didn't ask for riches beyond measure. He didn't ask for the lives of his enemies, which the survey says the top three, amen. In many cases would have been in our top three. He didn't ask any of those things. He asked God for wisdom. That leads me to believe that when it comes to acquiring wisdom, mm -hmm. it's important that I know who to go to, who to turn to, right. who I can trust, yeah. that they will give me an understanding of what wisdom is yeah. and how to go about utilizing it. So what is this thing that Solomon asked of the Lord that so pleased the Lord? Wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? What does wisdom look like? Wisdom is the knowledge and the ability to make the right choice at the opportune time. It's the knowledge and the ability to make the right choice. I'm talking about a righteous choice. It's always going to be a righteous choice if it involves wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot utilize wisdom that comes from God and make a wrong choice right. Amen. or make a bad decision right. if you utilize wisdom as wisdom is that the divine and we understand to come from God you can only make the right decision in any given matter. Amen. Doesn't matter what it is, what part of your life it involves, your health, your wealth, your well-being, your relationship, whatever the case may be, it can only be the right decision if you utilize wisdom that comes forth from God. So what is this thing that Solomon asked of the Lord that so pleased him? He asked for wisdom. He says, help me. Give me the ability to listen and understand that I may make the right decision, the right choice. Choices based upon wisdom. Conclusions that will be based upon wisdom. Righteousness. 
One of the things about wisdom, it involves consistency. If you know people in your life who are, you consider to be wise people and seem like they're always making the right decision, the right choice, no matter what the situation may be, no matter how hard of a decision may be, no matter how complicated the, the, the decision and the things that's involved in it, how complicated, seem like they always make the right decision, the right choice, is because wisdom involves consistency. Mm -hmm. You can't help but make the right decision if you make it based upon wisdom. Because even if it doesn't turn out the best for you, it still going to be a decision based on wisdom, and it's going to be righteous. Uh -huh. Sometimes we will cut corners and do all kinds of things to make sure things come out best for us. But when we look at using wisdom, regardless of the outcome, if we go by wisdom, it's a righteous decision, and God is in the picture. So watch this. Not only does wisdom involve consistency, but it's also an indication of maturity and development. It requires maturity and development. It requires making the, the hard right decision, in many cases, versus the easy wrong decision. A lot of decisions we can make in life, the answer is easy. It's opposite. We will take the easy path, right? But is it the right decision? Is it the right choice? Is it what God would say pleases him? Hmm. And do you learn how to start, start hurting from some of the decisions you make in life? Let me say this again. This is the preacher right here, brother. Until you start feeling the pain from some of the decisions you make in your life, you need to make the right decision. Because every decision you make, oh, I came out of that, I was so pain involved in that, I came out of that, I came out of that uninjured. Mm -hmm. You need to make the right decision. Because some decisions are going to cause pain. Yeah, if none of your decisions cause pain and discomfort, you might need to question your decision to make. You may need to question whether your decisions are, well, this is a good picture here. You ought to uh, question whether your decisions were made based upon wisdom mm -hmm. or an easy route. The easy end. But when it comes to God and his use of wisdom and his gift of wisdom, sometimes it's going to be painful for us, amen? amen? So wisdom, being able to listen and understand, having the knowledge and ability to make the right choice at the opportune time, involving consistency, is an indication of maturity and development. And also, it's a desire. It, it, it manifests or shows a desire to follow and imitate God. That they were saying. It shows your desire to follow and imitate God. God's plan for our life is always going to be the best plan. It's always going to be based upon righteousness. Sometimes it's going to hurt us. Sometimes it's going to hurt our loved ones. But that's what God was set out to do. That decision made us to come down to you saying, boy, that, ooh, that hurt right there. But God made the right call. Right. And if we're going to be like him, and we're going to imitate him, and be like him, and follow him, and manifest ourselves like him, we're going to have, have to learn how to use wisdom. And sometimes it's going to hurt. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Like, why didn't come out of On the top of that, on that, that deal. But hey, it's the choice that God would have had you to make. Because maybe there was a lesson in that situation that this is what it's going to take you to learn. Sometimes you just going to have to get your finger on your hand, amen? Yeah. My boy, ain't never made my hand. Maybe you ain't doing no devil. Maybe you ain't build enough. So if you build enough, if you're constructive enough, you're going to hurt your finger. You're going to pop that finger at some point, amen? Amen. amen? Carpenters know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. At some point, you want to either stop building 
Oh, you won't hit that finger. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So God and our desire to follow him requires that we walk in wisdom. Books have been written on the subject of wisdom. Psalms have been composed on the subject of wisdom. Many people will invite themselves uh, or step forward to offer their take on wisdom. Everybody been around somebody, maybe it was you. That person always has some wisdom you want to show somebody. Right. But usually, in too many cases, it wasn't the wisdom that comes forth from God. It was the wisdom of the world. Uh, they were not so much as wise as they were professional tipsters. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me explain to you what that uh, professional tipster is, Jane. In, in firearms training, you have guys who are really, really good instructors. I mean, they can take somebody that has never uh, handled a weapon and stuff and have them uh, using that weapon proficiently, safely, and everything, and become an expert marksman and all these things. And then there are other guys who offer professional tips. They're not good instructors, amen. Yeah. They can instruct themselves out of a wet paper bag, <laughs> but they're professional tipsters. And every tip they give you, though in their mind is professional, because it's coming from them, because they're professional, right? Mm -hmm. You never get any better at what you're trying to do. <laughs> there are some people who are professional tipsters when it comes to wisdom, and then there are others who are operating off of the uh, premise of being a child of God. Amen. And studying God's word, so the faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, the knowledge of God's word comes through the study of his word, and now that person comes to you and offers you wisdom. Not just tips. Amen. I'm going to have to follow with this person punch me in the face. I'm going to have to follow with this person punch me in the face. This person you get punch me in the face. What about punch me in the face? That's that professional tips. That person operating from the standpoint of wisdom will say, hey, sit down and talk with him and work it out. Praise God, God. Sit down and talk to him, and God's will be done. Solomon was able to receive wisdom from God. And here's the thing about wisdom. I talked about many books have been written about wisdom, songs from holes. You got those professional tips out there. They can tell you everything they need to know about wisdom that's never right. Amen. I wouldn't even be surprised if there's a book out there called Wisdom for Dummies. We got a pair of nails on Yeah. Anybody seen that book yet? Anybody got that book in the house? Anybody ever read that one? Wisdom for Dummies. Can you imagine? I'm going to read this book. And they usually, like, young folks are like, like, that or something. That's just how you feel. That's how you look at it. Wisdom for dummies. Can you imagine reading that and walk up to somebody and somebody puts me up with? <laughs> well, I got this problem I'm dealing with. Hey, I just read wisdom for dummies from front to back. Puts me up with. It ain't nothing I can't help you with. <laughs> you better run. And if you can't run, you need to walk fast. Get away from me, man. <laughs> well, that person will mess you up. Because wisdom is not going to come from reading a book called Wisdom. From dummies, wisdom for dummies. Wisdom comes from God in uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Listen to how simple this thing is. But you have to be willing to receive it, amen. And you have to go to Him in prayer, amen, recognizing that He is God and He is the source of wisdom. You have to go to him and pray. It says if in James chapter 1 verse 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, I'm glad everybody knows to go to Bishop Church and then try to call him. That's my family of Texas. Amen. <laughs> anyway, James chapter 1 verse 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask a uh, what, not professional tips? No. Don't, ask, don't ask that guy that can tell you uh, all about marriage because he's been married 15 times. Don't ask him. Don't 
bless that guy about uh, how to interview for a job and he ain't never had a job? Hmm. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Then give it to all men liberally and afraid him not, and it shall be given him. You go to God and ask for wisdom, he ain't gonna say, Well, it took you so long, amen. That's us. Somebody come to us for advice after the fact. You'll <laughs> be like, what, what took you so long? You should have listened to me a long time. I've been trying to tell you, though, my head. Well, what, you been, what you think I've been trying to tell you all this time? That's not God. All right. that's, not how he, that's not how he handles us, amen? James says, if you go to him, ask him for wisdom, he's not going to make you look silly right. or belittle you. You see that? He says, and it should be what? Given to him. But he says, but this is how you ask now. You can't go half stuff. He says, but let him ask in faith. <laughs> Nothing wavering. I guess it is a book called Wisdom of Dumbness, Brother Thompson. <laughs> okay. It's out there, y'all. Don't go by it, though. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. That's it. <laughs> it says, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. You can't go to God, you know, jumping your feet and head all down and stuff like, well, I know you probably ain't going to do this, but uh, <laughs> you right ain't going to do it. Go ahead and ask. That's me. That's, that's me. The God ain't said it. But you never be what you ask for. Amen. You can't go to him not believing that he will grant it. It says, let him ask in faith, James chapter 1, verse 6, as I close here, not wavering, for he that wavers like a wave of the sea driven with the wind. So if you ever seen a wave of just a third wave, just with your way of wind, though, that's the way the wave is going. Mm -hmm. That's how we are when we come before God and ask him something. Amen. If we're not confident and sure that God is going to grant it or not grant it, amen, and we're just like a just like a wave of the sea. You just back and forth, back and forth, and God's not gonna be bothered with that, amen. He's not gonna make you look silly anything, but he just not gonna give what that's for. So if you lack wisdom, do what Solomon did. Go to the Father. Amen. Don't rely on someone else. Amen. Don't rely on some writing of just any man. Talk about the Bible is an inspired word, God. That's different. Amen. Don't rely on wisdom for dummies. And now you're ready to hang up the shingle and say, hey, office hours open. I'm open for business. You thought you were being wisdom for dummies. You're not going to help anybody. If you truly want wisdom, to have wisdom as a part of who you are as a child of God, you're going to have to go to the Father. Mm -hmm. And let's look at wisdom real quick. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at some things about wisdom. If you really want to know about wisdom and come to understand wisdom, go and read the book of Proverbs. Right. Okay. It is chock full of things pertaining to wisdom. Wisdom is such that it cries out to us, right. trying to get our attention. Mm -hmm. And we, sadly, on too many occasions, we simply ignore that cry. But wisdom stands at the gate and cries out to us. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 1, Solomon says, Hear ye children, he instructs us of the Father, and attend to no understanding. What did Solomon ask God for in 1 Kings chapter 3? He asked for a listening heart and understanding. You've got to be able to listen. You've got to be able to understand the situation. You've got to be able to process the information that you receive. And when you are able to process the fish you see, you should be prepared as a child of God. Amen. That's true to study God's word to give an answer based upon wisdom. And one thing about that answer that you give is always going to be based upon righteousness. It's never going to be how to take a shortcut, how to get over it, things like that. It's going to be based upon righteousness, even when and up to and including you coming out on the short end. It didn't come out favorable for you, but it was the right thing to do. 
So he says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2, For I give you good doctrine, forsake me not my law. This is Solomon talking. For I was my father's son, tending on the love in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. He says, get what? Wisdom. Principally, get wisdom. First, get wisdom. That's the principal thing. Watch this. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Mm -hmm. So many times and so many problems that we encounter, brothers and sisters and family and friends, is because we don't use wisdom and we don't get an understanding of what we are dealing with. And that especially includes people because people are going to tell you who they are. Right. Amen. People are going to tell you who they are. They're going to do everything except wave a big old red flag. They're going to tell you who they are. So, girl, I didn't know he was like that. Like, man, I ain't going to have something like that. Yes, you did. Because everybody else was telling you. And you were seeing it, but you ignored it because that was what you wanted. Amen? So, besides, Brother Bishop, you're going to leave him alone? He says, I was my father's son. He goes on to say, get wisdom, get understanding, watch this, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. He says, forsake her not, and wisdom is seen as in you know, the feminine you know, sense, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Say, man, this is something special. This is something precious. And then he says in verse 7, what, wisdom? It's the principal thing. What's the principal thing? Wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all that getting, get understanding. Sister Wilson, you step back all the time. I was new in the church. She used to step back all the time. I was new in the church. She said, Brother Bishop, get wisdom. But also get understanding. Now, I was new in the church, so I didn't know, I didn't know the book of Job from <laughs> I ain't gonna go to the Bible yet, but she's telling me, Sister Hall, get wisdom and get understanding. Mm -hmm. But as I started to study over the years, and I was able to read this, I'm like, wow, that's what she was saying. Take your time. Take your time. I'm not gonna read you the Bible in here. Okay, you better do it in here. What do you understand? What do you remember? Take your time and study God's Word. Amen. God's Word has everything that we need. How do I know that? Because He says it. <laughs> it has everything that pertains to life and godliness. How do I know that? Because I read it. <laughs> what you read it? In this Word. Mm -hmm. We have to stay with God's word. We have to stay with the Lord in order to be able to receive wisdom and then to know how to use this wisdom. And then verse 8, still speaking about wisdom, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8, still speaking about wisdom, he says, exalt her and she shall promote thee. Hmm. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Man, look at that. Talking about what? Wisdom. To many of us, we are missing, we are lacking. Verse 10 says, Hear, O my son, and see my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, I have led thee in what? Right paths. Mm -hmm. God's word gives us everything that we need. In order to acquire wisdom, we simply had to ask him for it. We study this word. We have an understanding of how to utilize this word, his directions, his guidance, his statutes, his commandments, his precepts, all these things. But it has to come from this word. He's going to give you wisdom. Ask him for it. Don't go in there half step and wavering. Ask him for it. And then see how your life changes. Some of our lives are like on a bad loop. We just keep on the same thing over and over. 
You make the same mistake over and over, make the same bad decision over and over. Why is that? Because it's absent wisdom. We're not utilizing wisdom. We haven't asked God for it and then for help and understanding how to use it. And then using it always in a righteous sense, even when it doesn't come out in my, in my favor. Because this comes to come out in your favor may not be a benefit for you. Do you understand? Amen. Even when it doesn't come out in my favor, it was still the right decision. Amen? That's the wisdom that Solomon got from God. Solomon says, I'm going to trust the Lord to give me wisdom, to fill me with wisdom. And the last thing here before I close, James chapter 3. Because I talk about those professional tipsters and, and wisdom for dummies and all that stuff and all these different things we can go out in search of and seeking to acquire wisdom and how that's not going to work out for us the way it would if we just simply went to God's word. James gives a take on what that other stuff looks like. In James chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Who is a wise man? James 3 13 says, Who is a wise man and endure with knowledge among you? Let him sow out of good conversation of works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. He says, This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. There's a version of wisdom. It's the lie. Amen. There's truth and there's a lie. There's real and there's fake, right? There's a version of wisdom, but it's of the world. He says, James says, it's earthly, it's sensual, it's devilish. It's good to the senses. It, it, it feeds into things that we want to do that are not good for us. It feeds into all of that. It's devilish, it's earthly. And then he goes on to speak, but where enemies and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. He says, but the wisdom that is from above is first of all what? Pure. Then what? Peaceable. Then what? Gentle. Easy to be entreated. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without faith. Without hypocrisy. And then he goes on and closes in verse 18 he says, and the fruit of righteousness, the soul and peace of them that make peace. There's earthly wisdom, and then there's godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. Solomon sought out the godly wisdom. Solomon, with that question before him, put yourself in his position with that question before him. Whatever you want, name it. And he said, give me an understanding and listening heart. I may judge so great a people. Mm -hmm. Solomon said, give me wisdom. Help me to be able to make the right decision, the right choice, no matter what. No matter how I may be affected, no matter how others may be affected, help me to make the right decision before you. Yes. And this thing please God. If you want to please God, you got to trust in him. If you want to know what wisdom looks like, ask God mm -hmm. and expect to see his wisdom. And when you get wisdom, hold on to it. Man. Hold on to it. Embrace it. Embrace her. Don't let it go. Don't give her up. Fight tooth and nail to hold on to wisdom. And young people, middle-aged people, elderly people, it will take you to new heights. Yes. New heights. See how your life change when you trust God to fill you with wisdom. Look at what a difference it made in the life of Solomon. We could have read about Solomon in a completely different life if he had not asked God for what he asked for, wisdom. All right. We would have read about Solomon, how rich he was, how much of this he was, how he did this, how he did that, but we would never have known the greatness of Solomon if he had not asked God for wisdom. Right. And all these years later, we'll stand up talking about Solomon as an example of when we go to God, what to ask for. Mm -hmm. And immediately, he was put to the test. Because how many of us, faced with that same situation, these two women, 
going back and forth about this child would have thought to do something like he did. He's going to let this problem solve itself. Because I know in my heart of hearts, the mother of this child would not stand by to see harm come to her child. Amen. So the woman like, cut it in half. Split it right down the middle. Another woman like, don't, don't, don't do it. Give it to her. Give her a baby. That was wisdom. That was wisdom. That was one for the ages right there. That was making the right choice or the right decision. The only decision that was righteous that he made. And we're talking about him all these thousands of years later. I will trust the Lord to fill me with wisdom. Feel you this morning. Let me say this with all the love I can muster in my heart. If you're not a child of God, I'm talking to you. If you're not a child of God, you're not acting based upon the wisdom of God. You make decisions based upon the wisdom of the world. It's earthly, it's sensuous, and it's devilish. That's what the word offers you. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom of God says, when I hear the good news of the gospel, verse 15, 1 through 4, lays out the facts of how the son died on the cross of Calvary. They took his life and his body down and laid him in the grave. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. He said, you go and tell the story. What story? About my death, my birth, and my resurrection. When men today, boys today, girls today, they are the right age of accountability. They are able to understand this. Time them to make a decision. Now, able to understand what sin is and how God sees sin, and they have sin in their life, and they hear this message, it's time them to make a decision. A decision to do what? To obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. The one who hears that story, the death, the birth, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they should believe it. We're willing to repent for their sins. Now, I understand what this all means, what's all involved in this. I want nothing to do with sin. I'm repenting of my sin. I'm asking God for forgiveness. I'm pushing that away from me. And I'm willing to confess because of this change of heart that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I'm willing to go to the water grave and baptism and have my sins washed away. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is my plea. That is my cry. When I go into that water, have my sins washed away, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and some good comes towards God. The old man is crucified. Reconciliation begins. I contact the blood of Christ. I come about that water grave baptism. My soul is placed in that safe place of keeping to such time that the Lord comes back. That's the church. Amen. And in order for him to say, Well done, I good and faithful servant. Day of judgment, I must be faithful unto death, to the point of giving up my life before I renounce him. Mm -hmm. If you're this morning and not a child of God, this invitation is for you to encourage you to come forward. If you're a child of God, to follow my wayside, whatever reason, you need to yourself somewhere else. If you just need to take this time and say, Thank you, Lord, make that known right now as we stand and sing the song of encouragement. We come this morning. I'm